Hi there. Welcome. How are you doing? Good. You are way earlier than 5.45. Well, Hi. I... Last year's video started exactly like this. Is that right? I walked in and you were giving me a hug and saying hi. <laughs> well, I got here early. Yes. Because I want to get ready. Is it a picture or a video? You have to tell me what I'm It's doing. a video. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> now that I know, I don't know what to do. Hello. Hello. I just had a veggie wrap. <laughs> <laughs> I'm nervous. This is my first time. Okay. So, hopefully it turns out good. Something. Yes. <laughs> Say something. We're going to have fun tonight. We're going to laugh to our stomachs hurt. Look, Ron's yes. in a superhero pose. So good to see everybody. All I have to do is tie people. <laughs> yes. It's all for fun tonight. Have fun. For video. Just Something for video. No. Yes. <laughs> no, yeah. Excited to be here. Hopefully we have fun time. Yeah. Yeah, I'm glad this is my first time in doing comedy, telling Somali stories. So I love it. Yeah, we're excited to be here tonight for our second annual Just for Laughs. Hey, I'm gonna be your host for tonight. Yahoo! <laughs> made a hilariously smart decision to be here tonight. This is going to be a night of fun memories. Yay! Woo yeah! Okay, let me see. Who was here last year? Ah, you guys want some fun bag, yeah? Great! Well, thank you, Coffee Addict, for having Noka Oil Toastmasters again. For those who doesn't know what Toastmaster is, Toastmaster is a worldwide non-profit educational, educational organization that empowers individuals to become more effective leaders and communicators. Wow! And there are, to those days, almost 16,000 clubs, all spread within 142 countries. How about that? Woo and here we are with Noka Oi. Tell me, what is Noka Oi? Yes. yes, the best. To get our last muscles started, to get them warm up, let's welcome our joke master, Sarah Hempen. I love really good bad jokes. I have a couple of them to share with you today, so please don't stop me if you've heard it before. <laughs> a dumb beetle walks into the bar and he asks, is this stool taken? <laughs> what kind of coffee did they serve on the Titanic? Senka. <laughs> what do you call a Frenchman who wears sandals? <laughs> Did you hear about the Italian chef that died? He passed away. <laughs> That's all I have for you guys. Enjoy the show. You guys are very lucky to be here tonight. Let me tell you why. Two weeks ago, I was in New York City. Whoa, whoa, whoa. And I just wanted to experience my first comedy nightclub. So I went online, tried to find the best comedy club. I got it. I paid my ticket for $30.
As I got there, the hostess, oh boy, she looked really scary. For a moment I thought, whoa, did I sign up for a horror movie show in a comedy club? So she asked me with her scary look, what's your name? Okay, she found me on her list. And then she said, there to go down the basement and enjoy the show, the show. There is a minimum of two drinks. And with a scary face, I looked at her. You know, guys, I don't drink alcohol. Boy, I got scared. I was like, well, maybe people who don't drink, they're not will count in a comedy club. <laughs> so she looked at me and she said, no worries. We have a non-alcoholic package for $17. <sighs> with a big smile released, she gave me finally a smile back. So saying that, 30 bucks online, $17 at the cash register to go down the basement. That was another $17 for the non-alcoholic beverage. So with tax and tips, that came out about 60 bucks. So do you know why you're lucky? You're going to have a free fun night. How about that? So let's get started with that fun. Our first speaker who's going to share us a hilarious funny story is Chris Foster with his story about his truck named Bob. So I guess about two months ago I was driving with my roommate in my car and the air conditioner had just broken. And he said, there's no way you can drive around a Maui with a broken air conditioner. And I said, oh no, all contraire, my first truck didn't have air conditioning. He says, what idiot buys a truck without air conditioning? I said, my grandfather. <laughs> so we have to go back to my grandfather. He goes back to the uh, summer of 1993. And he'd driven his Ford Ranger, sold 70 Ford Ranger forever. And he saved up money. And the government went to him and said, you've got this 401k. You have to spend out of it or we're going to tax you. My grandfather was a frugal man. But the one thing he liked less than spending money was giving it to the government. So he had to decide to go and buy a brand new truck. So he goes to the Ford dealership, that's his previous Ranger at Dunwell, and he goes there and he gets the most basic truck possible. They literally, they go down the line, power steering, nope, air conditioning, nope, power windows, nope, automatic transmission, nope, all the way down, smallest engine possible. So they had to go custom build this truck in the factory because who buys a truck without power steering in the mid-90s? Gene, yeah. my grandfather. <laughs> But they custom build this and he gets it. And it's about 93. Unfortunately, he passed away a few years later, and that was time, about the time I needed to have a vehicle. So my grandmother gave me this truck. And my parents loved it because if I fell down a cliff in that truck, I could go about 75 miles an hour. <laughs> but I could also haul anything at 75 miles an hour. Why do I name this truck Bob? Well, at this point in time, my friends and I had decided to make a club called the, the Bob Club. And every single member of this club was named Bob. So I decided that it made sense for my truck to be named Bob as well because everything else was named Bob. And it was a very simple, basic truck with a simple, basic name. Eventually I graduated college and I decided I need to add to my car collection. So I fell into a found a, a, had a Corvette with a supercharger and I usually drove that and I still kept the truck around. So as we're going through time, I started dating this girl and I would normally pick her up in the Corvette because it had air conditioning and this was the South. But she said, I don't like this Corvette, it has this thing sticking out of the front. Look, that thing is called a supercharger, and it's awesome. <laughs> but I don't like it. Okay. <laughs> so the next time we go on a date, I go and I go to Bob, and I get inside of Bob, and I drive over to her house. She like, you're picking me up in that? You said not to pick you up in the Corvette. <laughs> I thought you'd get your dad's truck, or your dad's car. You're a ass man. I'm not going to drive in my dad's car. <laughs> Well, where's the air conditioning? So I'll let me roll down the window for you. <laughs> so we go on this date, and as we finish this date, I drive back, and she says, Okay, it's fine. You can pick me up in the Corvette whenever you want. Just please never pick me up in this thing again. I said, His name is Bob. <laughs> and yes, ma'am. <laughs> But eventually time went on and you know, Bob started to show his age. And I thought, well, I'll go and get him to my nephew who was learning how to drive. 
I mean, I taught him how to drive in a stick shift because it was really easy to learn how to drive. I had the easiest clutch, the easiest everything. Then I went and I, you know, I gave him this truck. Unfortunately, he didn't have the same memories of my grandfather that I did when he had the truck. So when he got it, he immediately turned it in. He got a car with air conditioning. I, I understand. You would have to know my grandfather, love my grandfather, to look at a truck with no air conditioning as a desirable thing. And I wasn't driving it anymore, so unfortunately Bob did need a sad end, but he gave me a lot of fun memories, so thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, please let's welcome Donna Clayton, the hatchet man and the Airbnb. sidewalk toward me and I'm thinking oh that's awful it's only seven o'clock in the morning <laughs> so here he comes and then I realize he has a hatchet he 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 said he has a hatchet and he's you know he's walk, walk he's literally walking around swinging a hatchet well what would you do <laughs> now let's review we have the iron, wrought iron grates on all the buildings. We have 25 homeless fellows across a narrow street. We have me, I'm an old broad, I can't outrun the guy, you know. <laughs> what am I gonna do? Well, I'll tell you what I did do, nothing. <laughs> I was frozen, I was just like <sighs> And then, you know how they say your life goes before your eyes? Well, not me. All I could think of was, he's so drunk, it's not going to be a quick kill. <laughs> he's going to beat me, it's going to hurt. That's going to be awful. And I just thought about it, and then he came closer, and then he walked right by me. Woo! About three steps. And then he did this. Woo! And I don't, I thought, don't let go, don't let go. And then he hurled that hatchet at a telephone pole. 
and it hit the pole, whack, and fell to the ground. And I texted Annie. <laughs> Annie, come now, guy with a hatchet man here. <laughs> the elevator opens and out comes my friend Annie. And she says, hi, I got your text. And I said, did you get all my texts? And she said, I, I got the one that said you were here. And I said, did you get the one about the hatchet man? And she said, the hatchet man? I said, yeah, there's a, the guy with the hatchet and he was throwing it and he was drunk and they were homeless. And, and she said, Donna, Donna, we're in Vancouver. It was an ax. <laughs> Could have been. <laughs> I'm not sure. I think you had to be there. <laughs> Thanks, folks. Well, well, well. Our next speaker got called by Attic Management because they're having a challenging situation while they're having a fun performance. Well, ladies and gentlemen, a super, super hero, a true superhero. Let's welcome Ronnie the Rat, or mostly the Rat Man. Hello Maui, aloha, so good to be back home in Noka Oi land. I really can't believe this happened to me. Have you ever, have you ever, thank you sweetheart, what's your name? back in 1979. I just bought a local neighborhood grocery store. I lived right across the street. It was April 1st, 1979, my first day. After a great day of working, I left the store, walked across the street, got to my front door, said, oh, forgot the milk. Turned around, went back, and opened the door of the store, went inside, it was alive. Animals were scurrying all over the place. I go, oh my God, what have I gotten myself into? Well, who are you gonna call? <laughs> Rat Man wasn't around then. So I had to systematically try to, to work something out. Have you ever heard or smelled 300 dead rats? <laughs> Whoa! Can everyone please stand up? What you got to do is you got to get down there with them. You got to get down and see what they see. Because they're not human beings. They, we have a different perspective. What a rat is looking for, he could only see for, you can sit down now, thank you. <laughs> he could only see about two feet in front of him. In my career as a superhero, this is how I would have to try to find the rats. Now John invited me here and I've been kind of looking around and I don't know, maybe you folks can help me with that. But before we do that, all this happened on the mainland. The, main, the mainland has rats that are very competitive. Dean Martin and Sammy Davis Jr. considered me to be an honorary member of their, rat, of their Rat Pack. I married Lisa from the Mickey Mouse Club. I became an official Mouseketeer, and all the girls that were Mouseketeers really, really idolized me. I'm an associate professor of verminology at East Los Angeles College. That's where I went for two years. And when I was on the mainland, Decon gave me a royalty to move me here to Maui because I was getting into their business. 
when I got here on Maui, the rafts over here are so nice. I mean, if they, if they, they are. I mean, there's no competition. They, they don't have to, they don't have to fight people or anything. They can live outside. They can live outside, eat the fruit. It's been really nice visiting with you all this time. And if you have any problems, I'd be glad to help you. But right now, I got to get to work. Thank you. Guess what? We have the funniest pastors in our club, no Kaoi Toastmaster. <coughs> and she will tell us if pastors are sinners as well. Please, let's welcome Kimberly Fong. There is a four pastors gathered together for breakfast and prayer meeting. Usually they talk behind their people's back. <laughs> and one day, um, Pastor says, well, our people will come to us and confess their sins. They get set free. Let us uh, all do that to one another. Confess our sins. Confession is uh, good for the souls. I will do first. Whenever I go on a vacation, I can't help but stop by a sports bar and drink and smoke cigar and relax. And the other pastor says, well, that's nothing. I am a compulsive shopaholic. Whenever it gets 50% off, I can't stop buying anything that I don't need. It. And so I have a real big credit card bills to pay off. And the third pastor says, you know, when I get mad, my anger gets hold of me. I am cursing like a sailor and kicking and screaming, and I can't stop doing that if when people get under my skin. And the fourth pastor didn't say a word when it came to her time. And other people, other pastors said, you've got to talk. Confess, what is your sin? And she says, she called her lips so tight. And uh, all the pastors says, Hey, you've heard our deep, uh, deepest secret and you've got to confess. You've got to confess. Come on, come on, confess. Well, my sin is gossip. I can't wait to get out of here to tell the whole wide <laughs> world what I just heard. That's me. <laughs> So now I'm going to tell you, whatever I heard, whenever I think of God's grace, I can't help but singing, Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretches like me. <laughs> I haven't told that. <laughs> I once was lost, but now I am found. Was blind, but now I see. Amen. As you experience, no Kaoi Toastmasters are just really talented. Our next speaker, she challenge yourself to not only give a funny speak, but to sing a funny song. Her idea was to sing a song from all the speeches we just heard. So please, I'm very curious. Are you too? Yeah. All right. Please, let's welcome Regina Nerlin. Hi, everyone. Yes wrote it last night. Don't judge me too harshly. It's <laughs> Friday night we're gathered here to have some fun. Statistics show when people hear of public speaking all they wanna do is run. 
they'd rather die than go in front of people on the stage and talk. But we are not Coito's Masters Club, we are here to show how to rock the stage. <laughs> Just for last, they say the day without laughter is the day wasted just for laughs a place to be this friday night and they have the best chai latte here i've ever tasted just for laughs we just really like to have fun and at the end of tonight we're gonna see who made us laugh the most and won <laughs> When I heard Chris was giving a speech about the truck named Bob, I was wondering if truck Bob was a truck who had a job. <laughs> was he a true superhero like in Ron's story? Or was Bob the kind of guy who lets others do his job but takes all the glory? <laughs> Donna told she has a story about a hatchet man and Airbnb. English isn't my first language. I had to look up in the dictionary what the word hatchet means. <laughs> Is this a story about survival or chopping some wood? Or building a tree house for Airbnb in Hollywood? <laughs> Ron was going to tell a story about a true superhero. When I heard that, I was thinking, is he going to talk about Batman, Captain Marvel, or there's a new hero of tomorrow? I heard most superheroes live in Cape Town. I was getting really excited thinking about his speech, but I had to calm down. <laughs> I don't really know a lot about church or congregation. That much I do know. The leadership of pastor is important. But what? Is Kimberly saying pastors commit sins? They have temptations? That is too much for me to handle. I need a vacation. <laughs> Just for laughs. It's been fun to come together and be with you all tonight. Just for laughs. This was a very complicated song for me to write. <laughs> but they say laughter is the best medicine, so I'll be okay. I'll gladly take these laugh pills. I don't even need a spoonful of sugar to make that medicine go down. Thank you for listening to me play just for laughs. <laughs> to make a cross for your favorite speaker, Chris. Donna, the Ratman, Kimberly, or Regina. Hi, Regina, you did such an awesome job. <laughs> Are you having fun hosting oh, us and everything? We're happy to have Toastmasters coming back for the second year of, of comedy. So look forward to you coming to some of our other shows as well. Ho ho ho! Alright! Are you ready for the second half of that? Yeah! Great! To continue, we gonna have again to start with with two joke masters. Our first joke master is Kimberly Fong. There was uh, three elderly sisters uh, lived together uh, on a house, two-story house, 96, 94, 92. So 96-year-old sister upstairs, she was putting her w one leg on her pants and stop and say. I wonder what I was going to do, one leg in or her one leg out. And so she called her sisters, sisters, come on up and help me. And the second sister says, okay, 94 year old sister says, okay, I'm coming up to help you. And on the way, halfway back to the second story, she stopped. What was I going to do? Was I going to up or down? And as a youngest sister, 92 year old, ah, shake her head. Sisters, and she knocked on the dining table. Sisters, what are you going to do when I'm not here? I'm coming up to help you. 
As soon as I found out who is at the door, <laughs> our next joke master is Leila from Somalia. Please, Leila, let's welcome Leila. Aloha. Aloha. Thank you for everybody for coming. This is awesome event. Um, I'm just going to share with you a little bit of story. I hope it's funny. It's called Layla is coming to America. <laughs> so I came here to the United States in 1998. I was wearing a lot of clothing. All you can see is just my face, a lot of Muslim clothing. And um, first day I came to the airport, and I was like, um, we were landing here in Arizona. And I needed to use the bathroom after we get off the airplane. And I was like, I had to use the bathroom. I was rushing and asked the translator, where is the bathroom? He says, over there, go ahead and use it. I went in, I see just such a beautiful room. And I'm like, no, there's no bathroom in there. Where is the bathroom? And he was like, it's in there. The bathroom is there. I'm like getting so irritated. I'm like, I don't know what's going on. So I went to the McDonald uh, corner and get a cup. <laughs> and went back to the bathroom and used my cup and came back and all of a sudden I had to take the bus back. I'm walking around, sweating in Arizona, hotter than Somalia and Phoenix, all upset. And I'm like, is this what I came for for 15 years? I can try to come to this country. So I'm running around looking for a bus to go back. And in my country, uh, you wave to people and we use the middle finger for direction. <laughs> <laughs> and they were like, so the immigration, they're like, if you lost, use your ID. It has your address, the translator. They're like, use your ID, it has the, um, your address, and people will help you find it. So I'm going around with all my, like, it look, look like a crazy Muslim lady. But now I can see how they thought I was crazy Muslim lady. <laughs> but I was like, at the time, I was like, oh my gosh, why are they running from me? Um, I don't smell bad. They told me wear nice clothes, and now they're running away from me. <laughs> it was like, what is going on? I'm like waving my middle finger. I'm pointing my ID. <laughs> I'm so frustrated. I went to McDonald's nearby, get some, um, just point the food. They gave me some food. I don't know the money. I don't know the change. I don't know anything. I just get my money back, trusting what they give me. So in my culture, also when you get a food, it's good to share with somebody else. You know, whoever is around. So I'm going around. Thank you. <laughs> so I'm going around. These people near me, and I'm like, you want food? And they're running away from me. <laughs> I'm like, oh my gosh, what am I doing wrong? I don't smell bad. <laughs> so the struggle of, of adaptation continues, but I'm grateful to be here and be here tonight with you. Thank you for coming. Okay, we're going to continue with table topics. Table topics, we do that in our Toastmaster meetings. That is... Um, a, a way how we can practice our spontaneous speaking. So we ask, we're gonna ask some questions and I hope I'm gonna have some volunteers and you're gonna come up and answer that question. Okay. My first question, once a year, you could transform yourself in a different creature. What would it be? Sure, that might be mystical, very special, maybe have superpowers. I think I'd like to be something very special like Beyonce. <laughs> <laughs> she can sing and to me that's a superpower. Yeah. And she's beautiful in a mystical sense. She can toss that hair <laughs> and do her little strut. <laughs> So you can see, I would really need some help and <laughs> to be granted that wish once a year to be Beyonce, I think that would be wonderful. So thank you. <laughs> Tell us about something's funny in your life that always makes you laugh. What always makes me laugh is 
I hadn't taken a vacation in three years. My boss owed me a trip, so hey, saved money on the airfare. And then I decided, where am I going to go? I'm going to go visit my sister in Seattle. And at first the trip didn't go well because I wasn't smiling, I was grouchy, and I was tired. So my sister took me to Arby's as a surprise to go on the way to Portland. And my sister decided to see how much I was paying attention. And out of the side of my eye, I looked at her, and she was rubbing horsey sauce, Arby sauce, all over her face, and started, <laughs> and anyone who knows me, if I laugh too hard, I snort like a pig. <laughs> she started doing that, and I started laughing so hard where I literally fell off the chair, and I was rolling on the floor and laughing. Fuck, this is probably about 15 years ago, and me and my sister still talk about the day that Barbies made me smile again. <laughs> what is the most useless talent you have? I want to hear the question again. I'm not sure if I have a useless talent. <laughs> I'm not sure anybody does have a useless talent. Let's see. I can tell you some of the talents I do have. Love to dance up on stage so I can be a Beyonce, just like <laughs> Olivia. <laughs> Woo! Now that, some people might consider that useless, but I wouldn't, that's so much talent. Um, I am a professional hula dancer. No one has a useless talent. <laughs> Thank you. It's the best and worst purchase you've ever made. I need a volunteer. I don't know what is my worst purchase, but my best one was my husband. Yeah. Oh. What ridiculous thing has someone tricked you into doing or believing? His name is Bill. My mother was not the humorist in the family. It was my dad, she laughed. But every 1st of April, every April Fool's Day, the kids would walk down and she'd make hot cakes and chocolate milk like always. And the hot cakes had string inside of them as you <laughs> ate the, the hot cakes. And, you, and we'd forget every year because she knew it was a joke. And then you just, oh, mom. Have dinner with any person, living or dead, who would you choose and what would you talk about? Oh, we know him, Chris. <laughs> This one's actually quite easy. It would definitely be uh, Benjamin Franklin. The more I read about him, the more I think he's the most awesome person that has ever lived. Yeah. I was reading about him. One of the first things they said, this guy went to him. He was already well known as Benjamin Franklin. This guy said, I have this keg of beer in my backyard, and people keep coming and stealing it from me. I don't know what to do. Benjamin Franklin said, I have an easy solution. You put a keg of really nice wine right inside the keg of beer, and no one will ever steal your beer. All right. <laughs> Trisha, who just loves to laugh with her sister about Arnie. Right on. Beyonce. <laughs> well, yeah, that's my real name. <laughs> <laughs> and we have no useless talent. <laughs> okay, did you get all that? Yeah. Oh, please is make the drum da -da 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 -da. is Chris Foster Thank you so much it's not easy to just to get up and say something spontaneous we are really curious let's get up all the speakers we had drum the Run the drum, the drum. I cannot speak anymore. All right. First place, it's Donna Clayton and and Regina. Two winners. Two winners. Two winners. Everybody's a winner. Our Noka Oi just for laugh. Thank you so much for Woo! making the life. Thank you. 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 Thank you.